Use case number eight. If a contact is created without a parent account, do not allow user to create the contact record. Now, how is this use case different from the seven previous use cases we discussed? Well, in the previous use cases, we created and we kind of did some DML operations, right? We tried to insert a record, update a record. But now we are trying to prevent the record from getting into the database. That is what this use case is about. And the question arises, can this be done via triggers? Yes, it can be done via triggers, right? So this is a simple scenario of data validation. This can also be achieved by validation rules. But the idea of this use case is to understand how can we throw errors from the trigger context and not allow user to create or edit data. Okay. So what's the ask if the contact is created without a parent account? What is the object in concern? The object is contact. And what is the event? The event is insert, right? Now you want to stop them from doing something. So would you want to do it after the record is saved to the database or before? You'd want to do this before, right? Because once it is saved to the database, how does it even ma matter, right? So the context will be before insert. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the Salesforce org and let's open our contact trigger. I believe we have a contact trigger file ready. Yes. And this is probably during the Apex trigger basics, we discussed about the different event types. Now, what is our use case here? It is for before insert, right? So I'll just get rid of everything else for now. And I'll just keep the before in insert context available. Cool. Right. Now, what is our use case? If the record is created without a parent account. Now, parent account means there's a relationship in picture, right? Now, we can go, because this is the child record and we want to take a look at the parent information, we can go to the child object and find what is the API name of the parent. So, I'll say open objects, contact, and here I should see something that's called, that's a reference and this is the one. So, it's called account ID, right? So, what I'll do is, I'll say for each contact that has come as part of trigger.new if con record dot account ID. What is our ask? It says if the record is created without a parent account, which means I can say that the account ID would be null, right? And if it is null, I want to throw the error, right? Now, before moving ahead here, let's save this first of all. Let's see if this is getting saved. Yeah, no errors. But what we want to do is we want to use the trigger framework now uh, all the time, right? So instead of writing things here, I'll say contact trigger handler dot handle before insert. Okay, and I'll just pass my trigger dot new for now to this method. Now let's take a look whether we have a handler created or not. We don't, so I'll just create a new Apex class. So I'll say file new contact trigger handler. Okay. And here I'll say public static void handle. Let's copy the name from here. And this will accept trigger.new, which is nothing but list of contact records, right? So list of contact new records. Okay. Let's save this first of all. And now let's save our trigger file. Okay, and now I can get rid of this particular code here. So I'll be doing this code on the handler file now. So I'll say for each contact record that exists in new records, I want to check if the current record in concern, the account ID for that record is equal to null or not. If it is equal to null, I want to throw an error. Right now, how do you throw error? A very simple method you have available here that relies on the S object variable is called the add error method. This is your method and it takes nothing but the error message that you want to throw. Okay. Now it takes into consideration the S object variable for whom you want to throw the error. So what is the variable in concern right now? It is the con record variable, right? Which has not adhered to what we want. So we'll say con record dot add error and we'll say parent information is mandatory for contact creation. Let's try to save this. So this saved up fine, right? Let's quickly test it out. Let's go to contacts and let's try to create a new one without the account information. So I'll say a contact. So I'll not choose the account name here. I'll simply go ahead and say save. 
So you see, it throws me an error that is coming not from validation rule, not from system validation, but from my trigger class. So it's saying parent information is mandatory for contact creation. Now let's write the happy path. If I associate an account here and say save, does it let me save it? It does. So our use case is working perfectly fine. And what have you been able to do? Not just the regular DML and uh, field updates and all of it. You are now been able to. You have now been able to throw error messages based on what your trigger code is working on. Right. So what did we do? We leveraged the before insert context because we had to throw an error before the record is saved to the database. And then we just did a simple check and we used the add error method and we just put in the error that we wanted to show the user. What variable? is used here the s object variable the s object variable currently in concern right because this record right here did not meet this criteria in the if clause is why we say con record dot add error that's how salesforce knows i need to throw the error on this particular screen for this particular contact right cool that was our eighth use case let's move on to the ninth use case